Joanne Frederick Blumenbach. Now, uh, he was born in May 11th, 1752. And he was a German physician, psychologist, naturalist, anthropologist, um, he is considered to be a main founder of zoology and anthropology as comparative scientific disciplines. He was also important as a race theorist. Now this race theorist stuff is why he pretty much was very important because he created race. People wasn't dealing with this concept of race until the Enlightenment period in the 1700s and during his time around 1770, 1760 because during this period you had uh, this was the beginning of America and see these rich bankers they was two hours away from him and in Germany and they all came up with this elaborate scheme to take away the identity of people and the bloodlines of the people and make everything about skin color and categorize people in a way where you would think about their skin color before you would think about their heritage, who they family, uh, what nation they family was connected to. Because if you are, say you are Johnson and uh, you have a son, your son name is going to be Johnson. So what they did was they took that concept and that situation out and start calling people by race when that that stuck with people through their whole uh, existence. But since 1776 and, and Joe uh, Joanne. Joan, Blumenbach, he was like in his 20s or 30s, around about 1776, but he was born in 1752. So 1776, he in his 20s, maybe uh, late 30s, and he was the main promoter of this race concept, this skin color thing. You see, black, white, yellow, and red. But people don't go back to no color and see when you thinking about uh, the Bible and it talks about um, that the identity of the Israelites would be lost uh, what's that Jeremiah 17 and 4 their heritage would, would they would discontinue from their heritage so them discontinuing from their heritage is uh, a major situation. Then you got the, 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 the Edomites was going to hide their identity in Jeremiah 49 and 10. So in Jeremiah spoke of both of these nations, Jacob and Esau having their identity uh, hidden and taken away and he is one of the main uh, components of doing this thing and it's all around the same time when the Rothschilds began their empire of banking uh, 
of banking and these Rothschild was G German Jewish people, so called Jewish people in Germany. Because see, Germany, when you go to back to uh, Jeremiah 49, Teman was the, the wise people in Germany. I mean, Teman was the wise Edomites. And so it was talking about Teman that they was going to try to hide the identity of Esau. They say we have the wisdom of teaming left. Let's get that real quick because that's a very important piece to the puzzle. Look at Jeremiah. Now we know what the, the, the Jeremiah 17 and 4. Let's get this. Jeremiah. It says, Concerning Edom, thus says the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in teeming? Is counsel perished from the Putin? Is their wisdom vanished? See, teeming was the Germans. They came up with the plan of hiding the identity of the people. It say in verse 10, but I have made Esau bare, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. This is how he was going to be able to hide himself. Because Teman is, is one of the sons of Esau. And Teman are the Germans, the with the wise ones. You see they have the the, the the technology, they come out with all the technology before everybody else. And when you look at some of these schools that they uh, have, they come out with this stuff. It's a movie, Um, the movie is called, oh man, it has something to do with, uh, oh, Biohackers. The movie Biohackers. Is a good movie to see how in depth in, in, into the wisdom that these Germans are in. They have DNA splicing where they can make rats glow in the dark. You see, that's how deep these Germans get with the wisdom and the technology and the science and the knowledge. You see, they can make an animal glow. They done went into the DNA and found out how to make the animal glow and do all kinds of stuff uh, that ain't even been done yet. And so, that's just an example of how the Germans um, exceed, uh, pretty much outdo all the other Edomites when it comes to wisdom. And so this is what they did. They created the Illuminati, the secret group that would push this agenda of destroying identities, enslaving the so-called Negroes in a society where they can benefit and become filthy rich of these people and push a extermination campaign on them you see, where they can poison the food, water, the poison the mines, and, and try to slowly get rid of these people. And uh, Margaret Sanger just ex exposed some of the stuff because she got caught making statements about the situation. And, and then her, she set up a foundation to try to get rid of the Israelites. Well, you see her, they got her organization uh, situated around all the neighborhoods of the uh, so-called blacks and Hispanics. And so this is the elaborate scheme of these dragons to try to take the identity away from 
people. Let me go ahead and get that Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. And I will call thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled the fire of my anger, which shall burn forever. See, if the Israelites are still in Jerusalem, it would, it, it, nobody can tell them that you're not the children of Israel. Because they living in their homeland. You see? But they not they not living in their homeland anymore. Same thing with the uh Edomites. They left was driven away from their homeland. Let's get that in Job. Job thirty then we're gonna transition into this skin color stuff. Now Job here it says in verse uh, 5, it says, They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief. Verse 6, it says, To dwell in the cleft of the, of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. So they were driven into the caves. They were driven off of, away from men. You see, even in their land, Petra and Edom, they was in the caves, but they they uh, was driven away from that place up until the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's why they was thought to call them Caucasian. And so this is the situation when it comes to these Edomites and the Israelites. Now, when you're talking about skin color, because they try to claim that they are so-called Jewish people, that was another part of their schemes and their plans. But this is the Israelites here. Job say, my skin is black upon me. You see, let me go back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 14 and 2. It say, Judas mourneth and the gates thereof language, they are black unto the ground. And the crowd of Jerusalem has gone up. So the Israelites wasn't so-called red peoples. They wasn't the so-called albino uh, leprosy having peoples. They were people that had dark, dark skin. You see? But that dark skin wasn't their identity. That dark skin wasn't defining who they were. There was no history to that dark skin. But this is the, the look of the people. It say, it say, I am black. Verse 5, I am black. Let's get that. I am black but calmly, meaning I'm black and I'm beautiful. You see, he said, O daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kadar. Kadar means dark skin. Because Kadar was a son of an Egyptian, a, 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 a charcoal, uh, dark skin Egyptian. And so he, those Egyptians were so dark, and his son people was calling dark-skinned people after the Egyptians. And it says, verse 6, Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me. You see? Now, if people try to say, this ain't King Solomon. He say the song of songs, which is Solomon. Now, Solomon wrote the song, but he wasn't talking about himself. But whoever he was talking about was an Israelite. Because Israelites only dealt with Israelites, especially the men. And so this was an Israelite he was talking about. And the Israelites say he was black. He was cut dark, dark skin. And so the lies that these people is telling that they come from the seed of Jacob when they don't, that they're the tribe of Judah. When they're not, only the Israelites, the blacks, descendants of slaves, uh, 
are the ones that go back to that nation. If they don't go back to the, to the Hamites, and they don't go back to the uh, Japheth, so the three sons that came out of that flood was Japheth, uh, Shem, and uh, Ham. So they don't come from Ham. They don't come from Japheth. They come from Shem. And Shem uh, was the one that had Jacob. And they are dark. Shem was dark-skinned people. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, all three of them were dark-skinned. Esau came out red. See, Esau came out with leprosy, clean leprosy, and that's why these dragons are certified Edomites. And anything come out their mouth is a lie. Let's go to um. That's why the Germans hid the identity of the peoples. Let's get that. Okay, you look at the top and say, Dogon the Edomite came and told Saul. So Edomite telling lies to Saul. He said, King David said, And thy tongue just devises mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. See, calling people a color. Thou, verse 3 Thou loveth evil more than good and loveth lying. Rather than to speak righteousness, thou loving all devouring words, O deceitful tongue. See, the Edomites love to lie. That's why they were the, the wise ones of the Edomites in the 1770s created this skin color narrative. And the per main person was this Joan Blumenbach. He was the one. To create this thing. And let's, let's go to Thessalonians. I'll close out on Thessalonians. Thessalonians, the second chapter. Uh, now, verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means. See, this is what was going to happen. The Edomites was going to come and deceive people because they love to lie. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Uh, see, they had to fall away from their identity. The Edomites had to come and deceive peoples. The Edomites had to come and cover over people's nationality. Take their forefathers away from them. And even hide themselves. Because if people know who they were, it was going to expose who the other people were. So everybody had to be uh, covered over. That's uh, what Isaiah 25 and 7. They put a covering cast, a veil over all the peoples of the world. It say, and that man of sin be revealed in the son of perdition. So they're going to be revealed. And then verse 8, it say, and then shall the wicked be revealed. That wicked, see that wicked go back to Malachi 1 and 4. The border, Edom is the border of wickedness. Then when you go to verse 9, it says, Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. See, talking about a skin color, that's a lying wonder. People, what, what, why did you think you come from, you, are, you, black, you calling yourself a, a color? See, that's a wonder to people with some kind of intelligence and, and, and knowledge of history. Why are you calling yourself a color? Why are you calling yourself white? You're not white. you red. Nobody is the color of white. Why are you calling yourself black? you brown. Nobody is the color of black. Or nobody is the color of yellow. The China man look almost red like the white man. So... What, why are you calling yourself these things? But this is what, this is a part of their lying wonders. And the Lord is exposing them through the spirit of his mouth because he's put the plan into his word. And we can see the plan now that his spirit 
have came upon us and it's starting to operate in our mouth. And he's using us as vessels to expose these dragons. That's why he's saying in Amos 3 and 7, I will do nothing except I reveal my secrets to my servants, the prophets. See, he, he wasn't going to do nothing. Nothing wasn't going to happen until the revealing come, and it was going to come through the prophets. When you see prophets stand up and start revealing things that was never talked about, Esau, Edom was never talked about until the prophets came and brought it up. And it became widespread common knowledge. You got Edomites riding by camps saying, I'm Esau. You see, confessing the operation. They would have never did that in 1985. They would have never did that in 1975. They would have never did that in 1996. You would have never had a so-called white person riding down the street talking about, and I'm Esau. It would have never happened. That's because the prophets have came and revealed it to the world. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rekakadash. Double honor to the elders pushing the truth. Peace to the elect worldwide. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, descendants of slaves, scattered around the globe. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.